Hey crew, now what you're about to see is going to blow your mind, trust me. We're gonna get to Grandmaster level content here in a second. The first clip is from a 1560 Legend Lost Sector and they are doing 50% more arc damage to me because of the arc burn and we just tank it all no problem. The second clip is from the new seasonal activity and they have swords over their heads so we're still a little bit under leveled here and yeah, again, it really doesn't even matter. 10 light level under, doesn't matter. So then I was like, okay, let's see if we really can tank some damage in end game content. I loaded up the 1590 Master Lost Sector. Now remember, I am power level 1567, so 23 power level below the recommended, and in a Grandmaster, you are capped at 25 below the power level. So this is as close to it gets to Grandmaster difficulty, and as you can see, this also has the 50% arc burn damage increase, and everything in these rooms shoot arc, including the overload champions at me. But does it really matter? No, it doesn't, because we are literally unkillable with this Titan build as long as you set it up right. And this is probably the closest thing we have ever had to an endgame tanky build. I just can't believe we survive, and even with Arc Burn on, it blows my mind. And again, we're only two power level off Grandmaster, right, with the gap that we have. And we don't have two fire team members with us. This is solo. So you'd get focused less with two members, and you don't even know what kind of builds those two members are running. We're doing three different things here to make this build really shine. First, we are stacking healing and resistance so we can survive pretty much anything, as you can see. Second, we're making sure we always have those healing options up and available because if we can't always have them available to us and have that healing proccing, then it's all kind of pointless, right? You just end up dying. And third, we're stacking some serious weapon damage to make sure we're putting out plenty of DPS. Since we can stand in the middle of everything, we got to be able to take it all down and we easily have a 50% damage increase at all times with this build. If you guys do enjoy this video or found it helpful, then make sure to hit that subscribe button for me and become part of the crew here. We're closing in on 100,000 subscribers, which would be absolutely awesome milestone to hit. And thank you so much to all of you that have become members of the channel. I really appreciate it. It means the world that you support me and support my content and enjoy the builds. And if you guys haven't checked out the memberships, make sure you do. You might find something in there that you like or just want to support me in a different way. And I would truly appreciate that if you choose to do so. And yes, I know that Roaring Flames got nerfed and so did Sunspot. So instead of a crazy throwing hammer build that like 5% of the community can actually pull off or crazy ability spam, this build is focused on basically cheating death 24 seven in any content and boosting weapon damage for a 50% buff at all times and even more based on your weapon choice. Just give it a try before you bash the poor Titan and poor Solar 3.0 because if you really play into it, it is a beast of its own, just a different playstyle than we're used to on Titans. Now we're on my Titan here and doesn't he look like a freaking badass? This guy's freaking sweet. Okay, so the new Solar 3.0 breakdown for your super, use Hammer of Soul. This is basically top tree hammer of the old subclasses. Burning Maul isn't as good anymore because Roaring Flames got a nerf, so just trust me, use Hammer of Soul. Maybe you can use a Burning Maul in easier content, but Hammer of Soul in harder content. Rally Barricade because we get our Barricade faster this way and we are healing so we never really have to hide behind our Barricade and it also does the increased weapon reload speed, stability, and rage. We're using Throwing Hammer instead of Hammer Strike. So Throwing Hammer because that way we can proc our damage boost easily from far away and we can always get our Hammer back in multiple ways. And then you can either use Thermite Grenade or Solar Grenade. I used them both, both work really well, completely up to you, but those are the two best choices that I would choose on a Titan right now. For the Aspects, we have Roaring Flames. Final Blows with Solar Abilities or Ignitions increase the damage of your Solar Abilities. This stacks three times, and then we also have Soul Invictus. Solar Ability Final Blows, Hammer of Soul Impacts, and Defeating Scorched Targets create Sunspots. Your abilities regenerate faster and your super drains more slowly while standing in a sunspot. Sunspots apply scorch and deal damage to targets inside. And then a big key to this build right here is the last sentence here. Entering a sunspot applies restoration. So restoration on your right hand side you see you regenerate health and shields over time cannot be interrupted by taking damage. Yes your health drops when you take damage but the healing keeps going. So what we're doing is we're stacking Restoration twice with this build and adding an Exotic that heals it even quicker because the Exotic got a buff with the new update. So we'll go over that. And then we're still doing our normal Scorch and Ignite, um, but we're more focused on survivability here and so that's what our Fragments are for. For our Fragments we have Ember of Torches. So powered melee attacks against combatants make you and nearby allies radiant. 
You do not have to get a kill with this. You literally just have to hit an enemy. So that's why we're using our throwing hammer and we're throwing it from a distance just to hit an enemy. And this Radiant is gonna last 15 seconds because of another fragment we're using. But Radiant is your weapons are enhanced by the power of the Traveler and deal increased damage to foes. This is a 25% damage buff that we have up all the time. That's really nice for doing minimal work, right? For throwing a hammer and we have a hammer when we need a hammer. We also have Ember of Solace. Radiant and Restoration effects applied to you have increased duration. So now we're increasing Radiant to about a 15 second timer and we're increase, increasing Restoration to an 8 or 9 second timer. And we're proccing, you know, by throwing Hammer for Radiant and we're proccing our Restoration by just entering a Sunspot. For our third one here, we have Ember of Ashes. You apply Scorch stacks to targets. The reason we're doing this is we do want Scorch to stack up. We want to ignite enemies because ignite enemies do a lot more damage. But we also want to have this Scorch going on at all times because we have right here Ember of Singeing. Your class ability recharges faster when you Scorch targets. We want to always be Scorching targets and that way we always have this class ability because we want to have this class ability to always have a Sunspot to be playing into the sunspots with our exotic. Now for your stats, I do have 100 resilience. I don't know if you guys know this, but going around right now, basically 100 resilience is gonna be the bar moving forward on every class because it gives you about a 40% total damage reduction. So almost what pre-protective light was, right? Pre-nerf. So 100 resilience adds a lot to this build. Trust me, I was running my warlock with about 50 resilience with my you know flame alchemist build and i can tell the difference already just by running 100 resilience on the titan now for weapons go with whatever you want we're getting the radiant buff the 25 percent uh radiant buff right so i would stack that on something that's giving you more damage you could go tommy's matchbook um you could do maybe prometheus lens so that way you're scorching enemies there's a lot of different options in the gameplay i went with teraba but i know a lot of you guys might not have teraba so do it whatever you want with weapons that's not really the primary focus of the build but anything that's adding damage to your build through a weapon would help right so terror terabuzz perk here is ravenous beast you know you hold it down and you get that awesome damage so i was running teraba now for your exotic you want lorelei splendor helm this thing got an awesome buff basically what it does is the barricade when you pop it it creates a sunspot or when you're critically wounded it creates a sunspot the sunspot at your location that has improved restoration effects so you heal even faster with the helmet on and then we're doubling that up because we're healing with the helmet and we're healing from the sunspot that creates restoration so we always have restoration times two which is the goal if you have restoration times two on the left you probably shouldn't be dying in any content except literally the hardest content in the game grandmaster but as you can see we were surviving close to grandmaster content and then I had Font of Might. Picking up an elemental well that matches your subclass energy type grants a temporary bonus to weapon damage of the same elemental type. This stacks on our Radiant buff from the subclass. So we're getting about a 50 to 55% damage increase by running Font of Might and Radiant together. And we're picking up a Solar Well to make sure that we have Font of Might going. On our gauntlets, we have Melee Wellmaker. So when we throw that hammer and we get a kill that's creating a well for us, we had both our champion mods because we were dealing with champions. So you can slot something else in there if you want when you're not dealing with champions. On my chest piece, Bountiful Wells to double up on the wells that we spawn. So now that we have one Melee Wellmaker on, we will spawn two wells when we get a melee kill. Yes, I know it's not worded that way, but it does work that way, trust me. And then from the artifact again, Armor of the Dying Star, reducing coming solar and void damage, and we double stack that. That gives us a 40% damage reduction to solar and void. And we're stacking that on top of our 100 resilience and on top of our double restoration healing. On the boots, we're using Elemental Ordnance, so another way to spawn wells. So now we have Melee Wellmaker and Elemental Ordnance, so Grenade Wellmaker. And then on the class item, I had elemental armaments, so our solar weapon can spawn wells. And we're spawning two wells every time any of these interactions happen. So that way we have a bunch of wells on the ground. We're using those wells with Font of Might in, and with Radiant to get that 50 to 55% damage boost. I had solar grenades cause disruption if I was using solar grenades. 
I had Revitalizing Blast, which is an artifact mod. Stunning a champion causes it to ignite and clears your shield stun. This is great. It always ignites a champion. You get that extra 20k or like 23k damage, which is just great. And then Utility Kickstart. When your class ability energy is fully expended, you gain class ability. So it bumps it up about a good 25% to start off. And like I said, we had 100 resilience. So that's the name of the game with this build. It's double restoration and always trying to have that up and then always have your double damage boost up with Font of Might and Radiant. So you're always healing, you're always doing extra damage and you always have the Sunspot and Barricade available because of the way the subclass is set up and feeding, scorching enemies and feeding back into that class ability. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have any questions or concerns and I will answer them for you. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you give it a try and give the Sunbreaker a shot with Solar 3.0 because it's much better than people are giving it credit for. And I'm gonna work around and do some stuff with the new melee ability and see if you guys enjoy that. Um, and we'll do a few different things with fun builds later on. But I wanted to get this one out there because it really showed how strong it was. You know, 23 power level under in that last sector. That's pretty crazy. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.